everyone and welcome to this video song frontier video my name is jay wakefield and today i'm actually going to be looking at something um that was requested of me by the power mac galaxy he was chatting to me the other day and he asked me if i'd ever tried to install windows 98 on um the 40 um, sub-series of the Dell Latitude C series laptops. Um, these are the machines with the uh, Pentium 4 processors in them that um, <coughs> were uh, designed for Windows XP. Um, that would be the Dell Latitude C640 and the Dell Latitude C840. I said that um, I'd not actually managed to, uh, I'd not actually ever installed Windows 98 on any of these machines, but that I would be willing to um, give it a shot. And he replied saying that um, he would like me to do that. So here we are then. This is my Dell Latitude C640 laptop. It's got a mobile Pentium 4, 1.7, I believe, gigahertz. Uh, 512 megs of RAM and ATI graphics. It also has, um, I believe it has a DVD-ROM CDRW drive. Not entirely sure on that one. Um, it has uh, USB ports. It has, um, I think, just the one USB port. Which, um, you know, it's, it's always been quite funny, actually. Dell, you know, they were never really too generous with their smaller C-series uh, notebooks. You know, the C6 series uh, notebooks with USB ports. You know, where whereas Acer were, um, you know, specking their systems up with um, two USB ports, you know, from as far back as the 522TX, um, Dell didn't necessarily do that. Um, so this machine only has one USB port, which is a wee bit odd for... Um, Windows XP era machines, but uh, nevertheless, you know, it's, um, it's kind of based on a slightly older design. Now, uh, these machines were the last of the Dell Latitude C series before Dell actually uh, came out with the D series, the, um, the D500, the D600 and the D800, um, you know, which eventually kind of grew and evolved into the DX30 series machines like uh, my d630 which is kind of buried under stuff here um <clears throat> you know and the d630s especially do seem to have gained some sort of cult-like status among computer collectors and admins alike you know because they are actually quite good machines okay they have their share of problems but um it iron those out what you have is a decent windows uh, vista era computer that can be used to run Windows 7 and Windows 8 very well. But I digress. Now back to the um, subject of this video. Now, back when Windows XP first came out, it was such a shift for a lot of people. I mean, it was, while it was built on the older Windows NT kernel, people at home were still using the Windows 9X line of operating systems. Uh, Windows 95, 98, and Windows ME. And there was a lot of people actually building systems, you know, in the mid-2000s and choosing to go with Windows 98 because, you know, prior to Service Pack 1 or 2, prior to Service Packs 1 and 2, Windows XP, for a lot of people, it was really quite unreliable. Not the best computing experience in the world. Um... You know, and, and a lot of games were not compatible with XP. And, you know, a lot of people would be playing games on their PC. So, you know, what they did is, you know, they wanted the power, but they didn't want Windows XP. <clears throat> of course, Windows 98 was uh, a much, much lighter operating system than Windows XP. But it also had its limitations. For example, you had the FAT32 file system, which as hard disk partition sizes grow... So do the cluster sizes. So you're actually wasting, you know, if, if you've got, um, you know, 512K cluster and you've got a file that's only four kilobytes in size, it'll take up like 512 kilobytes. Where is the other 508 kilobytes going? Nowhere. Um, 
also uh, quite insecure as well for a um, file system. Plus, Windows XP, you know, did actually offer NT style security, you know, which kind of helped. Well, it, it didn't make, obviously didn't make viruses completely disappear, you know, far from it. But <clears throat> it would kind of help, you know, by adding that extra layer of security, even in, even if just at a local level, i.e. not letting unauthorized users get into your computer. But nevertheless, people did actually use Windows 98 anyway, um, you know, for uh, quite a long time. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it is actually quite difficult to think of people actually hating Windows XP now, although I do remember it only too well. Um, you know, because XP went out of support last year. Jings, it was last year now, April the 8th. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, still use XP today. You know, they still have Windows XP machines that they still use. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bearing in mind, I don't actually use that as my main machine. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so here we have this uh, Dell Latitude C640. And, um, well, what I'm going to do with it is I'm actually going to install Windows 98 on it. So, first of all, I want to double check the specs just to see how wrong I've got it. Unfortunately, there's no BIOS battery in here. Well, there is, but it's dead. And it thinks it's August the 23rd, 2002. Nice. Okay, well, the time is, I'm going to say 12.08. Oh, ah, what's it doing? It's not the tab key. January um, the 6th, 2015. There we go. It is a 1.7 gigahertz processor. ATI Radeon 7500, 32 megs, uh, crystal audio controller, uh, 40 gig hard drive, and a DVD-ROM drive. Now, you know, if, if this is any good, I might actually be willing to put in a bigger hard drive and dual boot XP in 98. You know, just, just because I can, really. I think that'd be you know, a pretty neat wee project. So, what I need to do is um, obviously this is going to be needing to be um, some repartitioning uh, taking effect. So, um, you know, I'll have to do that before I can install Windows 98 because, you know, I've got Windows um, XP which uses the NTFS file system and um, yeah. Windows 98, second edition. See, I did actually have Windows 98 on my 2004 custom built for a wee while. For so when I first built it, for some reason it was not willing to boot into XP, so I put 98 on. And then the next day I managed to get XP set up running. Um, oops, a daisy. It's, um, it's not booted from the CD-ROM there. Well done. Just well done. Um... <coughs> So yeah, this this is um, this is POS Ready two thousand nine. Yeah, look, look at this. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, I don't I don't know how much this has been set up, but yeah, I mean I changed out. I I don't think this has been set up properly at all. <laughs> oh well. Well, not set up properly to my liking anyway. Right, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and boot from the CD-ROM, hopefully, if it will let me do that. Come on. There we go. I'm going to enlarge the screen. Boot from CD-ROM. Start with CD-ROM support for some reason. I like how you can boot from a CD-ROM, but not have CD-ROM support enabled. And the reason you can do that is because 
What the Windows 98 boot, uh, CD's bootloader does is emulate some sort of a Windows 98 boot floppy. So um, while CD-ROM support may not be enabled, it's still able to kind of use stuff. It's still able to kind of use the uh, floppy image that's been burned into the boot sector on the CD-ROM. Well, the, the boot image. It's able to use a boot floppy image. Um, the floppy image itself isn't written into the boot sector, but obviously... It does actually have a boot sector. Now, F-Disk. <coughs> right, it says your computer has NTFS partitions which may require large drive support. If you are using another operating system such as Windows NT which supports large drives, you should enable treating these partitions as large. Note, if you enter Y and the partition display looks incorrect or a hang or crash occurs, do nothing. Run F disk again and answer N to this question. Should NTFS uh, partition should NTFS partitions on all the drives be treated as large? Well, yes, it should because it's a forty gig partition. What I'm going to do: press free to delete a partition or logical DOS drive. Press enter. Press four to delete non DOS partitions. There we go. NTFS uh, thirty eight thousand one hundred fifty four megs. Um, selected. Uh, I. Um, Warning, data um, data in the deleted non-DOS partition will be lost. What non-DOS partition do you want to delete? I press, I select, um, chose one. Well, I just kind of accepted the default choice of one because there's only one partition on the drive. Do you wish to continue? Why? Non-DOS partition deleted. Now, I'm going to create a primary partition. I'm going to create a partition, um, DOS partition or logical DOS drive. I'm going to press 1, press enter, I accept the default selection of 1. Um, and I want to create a primary DOS partition. Again, I accept the default selection of 1. Um, now it's going to verify the drive integrity. Um, I guess it kind of, I guess it kind of uh, queries the drive on, you know, if it's... Uh, kept its election promises and, uh, you know, whether it's uh, got any um, expenses that it claimed, um, you know, unethically or, you know, kind of things like that. It questions the drive's ethics, it questions, you know, its stance on, you know, it questions how it uses the power. No, I'm only kidding, nothing, nothing like that. So obviously, because this is a large drive, F-Disk will take quite some time to format it. I mean, I could use a Cronus OS selector, but I'd need to actually plop in the floppy disk drive. Or actually just plug the parallel, flop, parallel part floppy in. Okay, so... Um that's it nearly finished uh, verifying the drive integrity. In a minute, it's going to ask, in fact, it's asking it now, do, I, do you wish to use the maximum available size for a primary DOS partition and make the partition active? Yes, I do. So again, it's going to verify drive integrity. You know, it's, it's going to make the partition. And again, this is going to take a while. So uh, once again, I will be back. So once again, it's uh, nearly finished verifying the drive integrity. Now I will need to restart the machine and boot back off of the Windows 98 disk. You must restart your system for your changes to take effect. Any drives you have created or changed must be formatted after you restart. Shut down Windows before restarting. Press ESC to escape exit uh, F disk. All right. Oops, forgot to press F12 to boot from the CD-ROM, but now we can see that the hard disk is completely unbootable. So, going to boot from the CD drive. Boot from CD, start with CD-ROM support, and I actually do need to start with CD-ROM support this time, because as soon as I've formatted the hard drive, I'm going to copy the Windows 98 files over. Right, okay. Now, if you're booting from the Windows 98 CD, to get to the format command, you actually have to go 
D colon and then CD198 and then format C colon slash S and what the slash S switch will do is copy the system files over make the hard disk bootable um, yes um, it says warning all data on non removable disk drive C will be lost proceed with format yes Unfortunately, when you have just created a partition, um, the format command will not let you quick format it. You actually have to do a full format. This is going to take some time, especially on a 40 gig disk. You know what I've been hankering after. That's right. <coughs> it's a cup of tea. <laughs> waiting on the kettle to boil. <laughs> the other day I actually, for the first time in a long time, I treated myself to a box of uh, the uh, proper Scottish blend tea. Uh, I've been buying the Mackenzie's uh, tea bags out of Aldi. Uh, Mackenzie's kind of Scottish blend, but um, got myself a box of the good stuff because um, I need a tea. And all that was all that I could get to was my local news agents at the time. It was uh, so, um, and that's uh, well, well, they had PG Tips and Tetley, but they had um, a couple of boxes of Scottish blend. And, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much what I went for, because, yeah. <laughs> it's the best out of the lot, Ian. Right. Okay, so I've got, um, I've got that. I've got some uh, milk. Milk! Right. Okay. Oh my goodness. Creepiest sounding fridge in the world. I don't know why on the video the tea looks orange while I'm stirring it. It's probably, um, could be the red from my shirt reflecting on it. No, it looks like a regular cup of tea. That's good. Right. Brilliant. Nice hot cup of tea. Now I'm going to have to wait for the rest of the format to complete. Okay, so the drive is formatted, but um, a lot more time has elapsed. You see, um, I knocked my case of CDs off of the chair. A l the majority of it, well, not the majority necessarily, but a lot of them kind of came, the uh, le the uh, spring, uh, the, the, le the uh, lever arch thing, that's not actually a lever, um, kind of opened up and all the actual wallets well, not all of them, but quite a few of them came flying out. So I um, sat and reorganised the discs one by one. So hopefully now um, they should be a wee bit more organised. So with that said, um, I am going to name the hard drive Windows. Um, 98. Now, um, what we're going to do 
the usual ritual of copying the Windows 98 files over. MD Windows, CD Windows, MD Options, CD Options, MD Cabs, CD Cabs, and then copy D colon backslash when. 98 backslash start dot start so there we go um so I'll just kind of let that copy now in my most recent video where I actually uh, formatted where I dual booted the uh, compact armada 1550T with Windows 3.1 and 95. I talked at length about how ScanDisk would not run um, because I had no high memory management uh, system driver loaded into DOS. Well, the ScanDisk version that comes with Windows 98 setup doesn't need one. So I will actually be able to run ScanDisk. And that is exactly what I will do, because I always like to check a volume before installing Windows to it. That's good. <clears throat> That's good tea. There we go. Now I'm done with the CD, so I'm just going to eject with it. Right, and now we're going to reboot the system. Hopefully, if I've done everything as I should have done, sorry about the shakiness there. If I've done everything as I should have done, yep, the system will boot. Now, focus, there we go. No, I said actually try and, you know, focus. No, I don't want hangover vision. Okay, hangover vision is what we've got. Ugh. Right, okay, look. Ugh. CD windows. CD options. CD cabs. And I'm going to type setup to run Windows 98 setup. It says uh, setup is now going to perform a routine check on your system to continue. Press enter to quit setup. Press esc. And as we can see, ScanDisk is running completely fine there. Excellent. <clears throat> now we're in Windows 98 setup. <clears throat> Obviously, this is going to um, take some time before it'll actually let me get into setup proper because it's uh, trying to seek from a floppy drive that's not connected. See, Windows 9X never really got the hang of this no floppy drive business. I remember when, um, you know, actually, I remember when I was at school and um, we had all the network upgraded in 2000, you know, all Windows 95 machines. Um, and I remember uh, the maths teacher at the time, he actually helped to set up the network. He, he was very good with his computers. Um, he'd actually coded uh, for us an arithmetic game, um, which was brilliant. But um, 
only he had four machines in his classroom. I mean, it was a small school, you know, so four computers would have, you know, yeah, not been too bad. So, yeah, he had four computers in his classroom. And three of the four didn't have a floppy drive in them. So, the floppy drives... And, and um, you know, I, I always found that quite weird. You know, having a... At the time, you know, having a system that didn't have a floppy drive. And I think he said something about, you know, people bringing in disks from home and viruses and whatnot. Which actually is, um, you know, it's... It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty sensible explanation, actually. Right, okay, so we don't want to set it up in Windows, c colon backslash Windows dot zero zero zero. Sorry, just had to break off there. But uh, at the same time, I couldn't help thinking, you know, it's quite odd these systems don't have floppy disk drives. They had CD drives, but not floppy drives. I'm going to go for a custom install here. Just install everything. The usual everything. Apart from online services, we don't need those. We don't need a lot of things, but... Don't want internet connection sharing either, but we'll have multi-language support. Latitude C640. C640. W98. There we go. W98. Right, work group, excellent. Keyboard layout, ah, British. Regional settings, English, British. United Kingdom. Do I want to create a startup disk? No. Again, it's going to try and seek from the non-existent floppy drive. So back to the story, I was saying, one of the machines, actually, the um, that maths teacher left um, about a year after the network was built. He was going to be doing some work out uh, somewhere else. And um, he actually, uh, and, and another one came in, he had uh, quite a sense of humour. I mean, both of the teachers did, but his sense of humour was a lot more dry, the replacement maths teachers. <laughs> And believe it or not, one of the machines that didn't have a floppy drive got a virus. So along came the technician. This was the same one who built my 2001 custom built. And um, there we go. And now it's like, oh, please remove the disk and then click OK to continue with setup. Start copying files. The Windows 98 setup now has enough information to start copying Windows 98 files to your computer. If you want to review or change any settings, click back to start copying Windows 98 files. Click next. So yeah, um, along came the technician. He actually had to um, per temporarily add a floppy drive just so that he could, uh, you know, boot. Um, you know, just so that he could actually use Windows. Uh, he could actually install Windows 95. And um, he actually asked the maths teacher, would you like a floppy drive installed? The maths teacher said, oh, well, may as well get more viruses. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was quite funny. Um, but enough of my silly school shenanigan stories. Um, I'm going to maybe go make another cup of tea. Because that's what you do while Windows is copying files. <laughs> okay, setup is now ready to restart your computer. Remove all disks from floppy drives and click OK to restart. There we go. Getting ready to start Windows 98. Should run quite fast on here, actually, because, I mean, this... Unless machine is... Pretty much nearly, it's pretty much around twice as fast as some of my other Windows 98 machines. So, right, okay. And then, um, Now I need a product key. 
Start wizard. Thank you for installing Windows 98. And so now Windows 98 is gonna going to try and find new hardware and it's going to be like, what kind of system is this? See now Windows 98 didn't actually come out of support until 2006. So a lot of device drivers and even computer systems actually had a lot of devices and computer systems, you know, up until that point, actually had drivers for Windows 98. So, you know, I mean, that, that is, um, so, I mean, that, that is something, I mean, I have the drivers for this laptop, so, you know, this isn't going to be a case of trying to use the VB display driver and knock together some sort of sound driver out of, hoping that the sound card somehow has Creative Labs Sound Blaster compatibility or something like that. No, this is actually, you know, going to be using the proper Dell approved drivers for this system. I just don't remember whether this machine had a wireless adapter. Right, okay, so I'm um, going to set the time zone. Do, 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 do. Control panel, programs on the start menu, wait a bit, wonder if it's crashed, wait a bit, well I'll be back as soon as it's done. Right, okay. Now we're going into Windows 98 properly for the first time. Now, I've realised why some of my machines appear to lock up on the uh, part where they're uh, setting up uh, start menu shortcuts. It's because, at that point, setup will seek the floppy drive. And because there's no floppy drive, because it kind of locks up for a wee while while it tries to seek the floppy drive, that's what happens. So instead of restarting, as I've done, and try to, you know, control, alt, delete, you know, end programs that, you know, don't seem to be responding, the best course of action is actually to wait. And that's me growing up. <laughs> so if you leave it long enough on that bit, it will finally go onto the part where it sets up Windows Help. I've been scratching my head all this time, wondering why some machines seem to lock up at that point. And um, it turns out that's what it is. Lack of floppy drive. <laughs> Jings. Okay, so um, we're actually in Windows 98. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, come on you, come on. Right, now, because it's Windows 98, it does not have Uf USB flash drive support out of the box. And guess what I've done with my uh, Dell Latitude C640 Windows 98 drivers? Yeah. So now to install some drivers um, for USB support. Now if you want this driver yourself, and naturally you do, the one that you need to look for is NUSB33E. Um, there's two drivers. There's one for Windows 98 First Edition and one for Windows 98 Second Edition. Native USB disk driver of Windows 98 SE version. 3.3 all right so that's installed so now I just need to reboot the computer and there you go USB storage in Windows 98 now because I believe this is USB 1.1 uh, on this machine 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the drivers over to the hard drive and install them from there. Sorry, that was my personal flash disk. So there we go. Don't like to show off private files. Right. <clears throat> uh, I forgot to do the video drivers. Well done, Jay. J J well done. Oh well, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and install the drivers and get the rest of them, obviously. Just the video drivers. Um, and I'll be right back as soon as that's done. Okay. So as you can see, Windows 98 is all up and running and installed and what have you. However, there is a slight issue. Um, I can't actually run wireless on this on Windows, Windows 98. And it's nothing to do with the laptop. What it, um, what's happened is, um, I, I don't know exactly what's happened. I don't know whether I installed it or whether it came with it. Um, but this computer actually has a newer wireless card. One that would have actually came out of a, D, a Dell Latitude D600 or D800. And as such, does not have the drivers for Windows 98. Now, wireless isn't that important to me on a Windows 98 system, but if you wanted to run wireless, you've got a couple of options. Um, either replace a wireless card with one that says Windows 98 compatible, or use a PC card wireless solution. Um, but uh, obviously it's best not to access the internet at all with uh, Windows 98, you know, it being so old and out of support and what have you. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is Windows 98 working on this system. Uh, I guess we can run a, a wee Canyon test. Uh, uh, guess we can do that. The speakers on this machine aren't the best. And all its glorious wavetable synthesis. Uh, that was Canyon. So, um, yeah, this, this um, you know, this, this actually runs Windows 98 perfectly well. Will I dual boot it? Um, not entirely sure. Personally, I don't like having um, hardware not being recognised by the system. Um, so if I were to dual boot it, I would probably have to try and find you know, the correct wireless card that goes with this machine, I, yes, I can be that OCD about it, you know, it's, uh, you know. But, um, <clears throat> apart from that, you know, it's it's really not a bad system at all. Uh, with Windows 98 on it, you know, it's, it's perfectly quick, you know, and with 512 megs of memory, you know, it's perfectly compatible as well. Um, you know, so if you wanted a really fast Windows 98 system, it is perfectly doable. See if it shuts down properly. 
very quickly. Yes. So, uh, that concludes this video, Some Frontier video. If you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe. Um, also, please feel free to uh, like uh, Video Some Frontier on Facebook and read my uh, website. Uh, the URLs for all of those will follow. But um, in the meantime, thank you for watching this video and please join me for my next one.